Hello YouTubers, this is a lesson on going to Louisiana, also known as the CC Rider by Mans Lipscomb. And in the video description you will find a link to the tablature, which is free at my website. You can download it there and print it out. And <clears throat> there's also a link to the performance I did. Now I'm capoed on the first fret, so we're playing the same uh, key as the performance and of course when I say third fret my finger is on the fourth fret but since the capo is there it is a third fret so this is a C although it's a C sharp in reality so I'm tuned like and this is in the key of C and in the key of C there's not much playing with a monotonic bass Mans Lipscomb does it often but uh, you don't hear it much uh, with other players. So I thought it uh, would be a nice variation on always playing in that key of E, where there's a lot of uh, dead temp or monotonic bass playing. So I'd uh, say take the tap in hand and let's play the first four bars slowly. Starting with a partial C chord, uh, you, you have your A chord here, when you move it up it's an A sharp, with a uh, bar, A sharp, B and C. So this is a third fret, fifth fret, fifth fret. And you can play it fairly hard, so that, that G string sounds, it doesn't matter uh, to the sound. And you know, the whole tune I'm muting the bass strings, I'm placing my palm, this part, the fleshy part of my palm, on the bridge or on the strings so that the strings are muted. Unmuted it would sound. So that goes for the, this song too. Five uh, to eight. I will play that now slowly. Okay. Now uh, there's one thing you have to watch. That's in the fifth bar. This note, third fret on the fourth string is played with the index finger. It's a melody note and it's not often that there are melody notes on the bass strings but here it has one. Back to C. And here in that seventh bar you will see that the first beats are with the C chord, the bass, third fret, fifth string and then to facilitate the bend I'm removing my my fingers and only playing that bent on the second string fourth fret. And you notice if you mute the strings, it doesn't matter whether it's in C or A. Uh, that note doesn't clash with uh, the rest of the chord. five beats in that eighth measure and well we'll talk about that later and I'll play now the bars 9 to 12 the third line of the uh, tab <laughs> and the first two bars are exactly the same as bars 5 and 6 and then we go to the 11 bar riff and note in the tablature there's a little sign like this above the third beat the open E string and it means that you need to mute it after you've played it so what I do is 
I'm playing the slide from the third to the fourth fret with the index and then the open E string and after I played it I rest my middle finger on the string so it is muted. Unmuted, without any muting it would sound like this. It's a bit of practice but it's a very very important feature of blues playing that you are able to mute strings when necessary. Like this. Placing the fingers on the strings afterwards. So uh, in the 12th measure you can really hear the muting of the bass and I'm doing more like this. I hit it and then afterwards immediately to give it a bit more uh, accenting. And here's the 13 bars or the fourth line of the tap. And there we go to a G chord. And we only play the sixth string with our ring finger and we tilt it a little bit so that the fifth string is muted. Because, well, in this chord it doesn't belong there. And also, if we do not finger other uh, strings, we could string, uh, finger, for example, the fifth string on the second fret to form a fully G chord, but it would hinder our movement. So. to the uh, turnaround and we're sliding our pinky to the fifth fret, second string, and moving our bay, uh, thumb over the third string. So the turnaround is going down and the bass is going up. Now man's lips come didn't play this uh, kind of turnaround, it's typical blind Blake, and man's well, always uh, taking the simple solution, he simply played like this. Placed his finger on the third fret, sixth string, and went down on the first string, three, two, one, and then to the C chord. Now, at the bottom of the first page of the tab, you will see three variations for bar seven or eleven. They are interchangeable. There's only one thing you gotta watch. Um, they are followed by a measure with four beats. So the eighth measure of the song, as it is tapped out, you will see this five bar four, five quarters, there's five beats in it. I'll play it once more. It's because that then takes two beats. It's a bit long, the whole thing is a bit longer. But if you take uh, the variations, and I will play the first one. See, that's only four beats. The first beat of that eighth measure, that open string, that is omitted. We don't play that one with the variations. So one more time, that third variation. Simply the eleventh measure, followed by the twelfth, the going down of the, the C chord on the fifth string. Now the second variation, it's a simple riff, or followed by the eleventh. Sorry, as a replacement of the eleventh, of course. Then the third variation, and here I chose to stay on the C chord for the whole um, uh, variation. You can play it the, 
the second, uh, the third and the fourth beat with the open A string also. Okay, now I'm going to play it one more time, the first uh, verse or the first section, and I'll sing slow, <coughs> softly, sorry, so you can hear more or less where the words are fitted. of the accompaniment and I will play uh, the first part slowly. And there it's exactly the same as the accompaniment. The F uh, two measures are simply repeated. Then we're going down. And there's a little variation. Instead of going straight to that G chord, I'm going to a long A chord. It's fifth fret, second, second, second. So in context, it would sound like this. After that long chord, I'm going as the same uh, G uh, riff as in the complement, only in the first two beats, I instead of going one time, I'm doing it twice. Beat than on the beat. It doesn't really matter here. So, um, also in the where we play the F in the solo, I'm muting by placing the middle finger again on the string after the bend. Okay, and then finally, after the last verse, we have the turnaround. Hit the, heat, the C chord, and then we have an end tag. Notice that this, the notes are kept short by muting again. So we're going to the 8th fret. And a quick hammer on. You have to use your both fingers so you're able to mute them, to mute uh, some strings, because uh, like the open E, uh, the last beat of that uh, first measure of the end tag. That's it for this tune. I hope you have fun with it. It's a, it's a nice tune. It's not too difficult. And if you really got a hang of that uh, monotonic bass, uh, it's, it's really simple. And that's the real appeal of the song, the, the driving rhythm of the bass. Okay, I'm gonna take the phonograph record. Yeah, by the way, the song is on this LP 
And strangely enough, the LP has been reissued on this CD, but uh, Going to Louisiana is not on it. So I will play this, the LP now, and so you can hear the original version, because I haven't found it on uh, YouTube either. So, that's it for, uh, for this lesson. Hope you have fun. Bye-bye. Take one of my women, give my partner one.